So guys, I know these are not exactly new weapons, but these are reissued weapons that I just wanted to go over the roles with first. And these are the Moon reissued weapons and Dreaming City reissued weapons. We're also going to touch on the Solstice Shotgun just to kind of peer into any of the roles there if it's worth going after. Although if you're already doing Solstice, you might as well. With that being said, let's start with the most hyped hand cannon currently right now, considering it is the only 120 that can roll with Kill Clip that you can currently obtain. Obtain. We'll be reviewing it here soon. This is actually Loud Lullaby. It's a kinetic hand cannon. And I've played already with a number of rolls for this hand cannon. But looking here at the random rolls, you got a lot of good juicy stuff. First up in that first column, tunnel vision, slide shot, heating up, moving target, surplus. You know, for the longest time, the debate there between hand cannons in the energy slot for 120s has been Igneous Hammer versus Bottom Dollar. Bottom Dollar was able to compete against Igneous Hammer and its base defense false stance because bottom dollar could roll with surplus we're going to review it in more depth but i will just tell you this i've played with a number of rolls already with loud lullaby i love heating up i love tunnel vision but the more and more i play with loud lullaby the more i think i'm going to go with surplus just because the stats of this weapon are kind of piss poor stability handling everything there needs some help now the other traits there in that final column you got kill clip which is the obvious go-to choice for pvp and for pve for that matter but you also got osmosis which i don't want you you to overlook in burn activities lost sectors etc osmosis is really really nice simultaneously you also have frenzy which you can even double stack things like frenzy and surplus together which should be pretty crazy especially with the increase there in reload speeds and if you're looking to just kind of fuel something into your neutral game the combination of surplus wellspring is actually kind of nice you got one feeding energy back into your abilities with every kill while the other traits is gaining advantages with every ability that you hold on to you also have adrenaline jump Junkie for those that are rocking a grenade based build although it would have been really nice here to have like adrenaline junkie demolitionist together outside of that guys one thing i can say about loud lullaby even though the range has been nerfed on all of our 120s you really want to try to go for consistency here with loud lullaby if you want to make this a main weapon for yourself so don't overcommit to perks like full bore which hurt that stability choose things like small bore maybe even hammer forge rifling i do think that you need to go with a range boost perk like Akaras rounds but outside of that i do have a few other roles that i need to test to truly narrow down what it is i like the most moving on to our shotgun by the way guys these are all weapons you can get from the lectern we were actually farming it the other day i didn't really say like where you can find these weapons but i i assume everyone knows how to find these weapons but one small step a rapid fire frame shotgun which yes also got nerfed in this sandbox i thought rapid fires were actually going to become potentially the next meta not necessarily Matter of fact, they all feel pretty terrible. However, let's take a look at the rolls because this could turn us. First up, my eyes are catching, of course, Trench Barrel, Swashbuckler, One for All. All right. You could do a combination like One for All Feeding Frenzy or maybe even One for All Surplus. One for All is kind of a difficult one to proc on a shotgun. Like, I actually really like One for All on a lot of weapons. I love it on primaries. I also like it on a Nishin Code, which is a grenade launcher because of that explosion blast. It makes contact with a number of enemies that are grouped together. One for All on a shotgun you're already within close quarters then you got to spread the shot out to three different enemies yes it's got some pellet spread but it's dangerous i don't know i'm looking at this guy's trench barrel yes it's an option am i that impressed with it not necessarily but you do have swashbuckler for those moments that you're rocking a melee based build i guess you can rock osmosis there at the bottom for burn activities as that would just give you a higher flat percentage buff there and damage anyways i'm looking i'm i'm, I'm trying to find the sweet spot maybe a swashbuckler firmly planted roll or swashbuckler slide shot role for pvp but like i just said guys shotguns in this sandbox you either got the god god role like fell winter astral horizon which i think aggressives are still the best shotguns amongst legendary regular shotguns outside of slugs or you're rocking lord of wolves like really that that's your options i see it here i see the potential of full choke acarized rounds rifle barrel acarized rounds slide shot firmly planted with maybe swashbuckler or even thresh but fellas we just tested perfect paradox with the god roll it's essentially max range firmly planted opening shot and it was struggling to even get the two tap at nine meters which previously it could get the two tap at 11 meters now i know that still exceeds fell winter but it requires two shots the point i'm trying to make is this ain't gonna be a meta weapon inside of pvp moving on we have tranquility this is a sniper rifle present in the kinetic slot it is in the adaptive frame archetype 
and let's take a look. All right, I'm seeing some potential here. Under pressure. Look, don't hate on it. Inside of PvP, you're spawning with two rounds. Boom, under pressure is procced. It's buffing that accuracy. These make for some cheesy opportunities. This is also a 45 zoom sniper rifle. Nothing here really helping with the snappiness outside of maybe elemental capacitor if you're rocking like an arc based class or even stasis for that increase in movement speed while aiming down sights. I guess you could go with a thresh roll, like thresh under pressure. If you really want to make sure you're going to land your shots though, surplus eye to storm. If you're in those moments, you're aiming down sights, somebody's unloading into your face, you then just squeeze out a shot and it lands. Most notably due to the fact that you have two perks there double stacking your accuracy. And by the way, if you overcommit to holding two unflinching perks, that is actually the equivalent of no distractions, which used to be present on the sniper rifle. It's not anymore. Neither is firing line, which is kind of weird. They're like, they're in the curated role, but I guess you can't get that anymore. What you see down here in the random rolls is only what you can get. Now, inside of PvE, you got Frenzy, because yes, close quarter combat with your sniper rifle is exactly what we like to do. I don't know. I'm looking here, guys. I, I don't see much pointing to this sniper rifle being an option inside of PvE. I'm looking at it more for PvP, and I know a lot of people don't look at it that way. Tranquility has never been one that people have considered to be a sniper rifle for PvP, but just look at it under pressure and eye the storm. That's the main things that are standing out to me. Outside of that, maybe Osmosis. Wow, Osmosis is the best thing we got here. Again, Tranquility's biggest competition is Eye of Soul, and Eye of Soul's got a lot of goodies, especially for PvP. We're gonna be reviewing this sniper rifle. I like the way Tranquility feels. Will under pressure Eye of the Storm net me nasty, cheesy sniper rifle kills? We'll see. Moving on to one of my favorite auto rifles in the game, Arc Logic. This is the energy legendary auto rifle in the adaptive frame archetype. And at one time, 600 round per minute auto rifles were literally the best weapons in the game. No lie. Now looking at its perks, this is kind of weird, man. It's like one column, kind of similar to Tranquility. One column is super nasty, right? And look at that first column, tonal vision, heating up, killing wind, surplus, even feeding frenzy, especially for PVE. But then that final column, it's like, where are we going with this? Like, don't get me wrong, heating up, tonal vision, they're nice everywhere in the game, but they're definitely more tuned for PVP, in my opinion. Looking at PVE though, again, similar to Loud Lullaby, frenzy, surplus, maybe adrenaline junkie with surplus feeding frenzy. Surrounded is kind of a tough one for an auto rifle. I mean, you gotta be in the stuff. You can get it going, especially when you got like multi-levels, right? Like that's the best time to proc surround it. When you got multiple levels of enemies underneath you or above you, like playing more vertical, you can just sit there and leave those enemies there and just keep surrounded procced at all times. You also got Wellspring there as well and do Wellspring surplus again. But for PVP, I think the only thing in that last column that's really gonna help you is gonna be elemental capacitor, which is nice for people that are rocking the right subclass. I don't think you need increased handling or reload speed from solar. Stasis though would be good there for that increase in movement speed as well as it moderately control and recoil, which is like a plus 20 there to recoil direction, which would actually put this weapon around 67, which is an odd one, right? Like what the hell does 67 even do? What I can say is you can actually double stack it though. Elemental capacitor, stasis subclass, plus 20 recoil, get that up to 67, then rock arrowhead break, just launch that thing up to 97, which is pretty much vertical, or at least it should be. On top of that, the increase in movement speed while aiming on sights could be good for dueling, right? However, you are locked to a subclass. You can, of course, just rock a void based subclass and get the increase in stability, which is also plus 20. That first column though, what's the best there to rock with elemental capacitor? I mean, hands down, we want a damage perk, but obviously Bungie's saying, hey, no, you're not gonna get that. So choose something with consistency. If you want upfront consistency, obviously surplus. Then those first traits are everything else that follows. Things that increase with kills. Personally, this is one of those weapons considering it's got 41 rounds in the magazine. I love the idea of just laying on the trigger and not caring. Heating up on an auto rifle. We tried on our Chroma Rush. Disgusting. Now granted, Chroma Rush was kind of a different animal because you could stack heating up with Rampage, which would have been perfect here, Bungie. But as you see here, this is not an option. Honestly, I'm starting to get let down by some of these rolls, man. Like this used to be one of the best auto rifles because it came with things like Overflow. You would have like 90 rounds in your magazine. I had a nasty build a long time ago with Overflow. It was like Overflow Demolitionist. I mean, I guess you can kind of do the same thing here with like Wellspring Surplus Feeding Frenzy. And I know you got Adrenaline Junkie too, which sure, why not? I'm just saying, as of now, I I'm just not seeing any perk combinations outside of what we saw in Loud Lullaby that's like really impressing me. Now moving on, we have Dream Breaker, the most meta fusion rifle in the game. No, not really. This is an adaptive frame fusion, meaning it has a 
660 charge time. Think Trinary from Gambit, which I know I've had a number of people send me messages like, yo, Trinary is meta. You need to get a review on it. Guys, there's a reason why I have not reviewed it for PvP. It's just not good. In comparison to Plug, Plug is a good fusion rifle and way more consistent, probably due to the fact that it's in the precision archetype. But let's take a look. Maybe, maybe we'll be swayed here. First up, I see Kickstart, which is interesting. Still gonna probably require five bolts though, as this is already starting off at 38 damage per bolt, which means it probably won't be kicked up to 46 damage per bolt with Kickstart. However, even its base damage at 38 on high resilience guardians or mid to high resilience is gonna require six bolts. Six out of the seven bolts, man. So yeah, Kickstart does help in adding a little more forgiveness, but I would just go ahead and rock liquid coils on this thing. I love particle repeater. We talked about particle repeater on fusion rifles and how consistent they make them. I'm just trying to offer you a solution to make this fusion rifle somewhat usable inside of PvP. Liquid coils though, under pressure, corner, that seems like a pretty good option. So outside of that, under pressure, kickstart. I see Eye of the Storm, which I, I gotta tell you, I'm intrigued. Eye of the Storm. I never thought about it. On a fusion, maybe. Now, not necessarily against a shotgun, but against a primary that's just tapping damage into you. By the time you actually charge up this fusion rifle, Eye of the Storm will be procced, and if you're stacking it there with under pressure, boom, it should land. Liquid coils on top of that should secure the five bolt kill even on mid resilience guardians you see where we're going with this guys that's really the only options i see for pvp i know it's got tunnel vision and heating up i'm not saying you can't make those work i love cornering and heating up together i think chaining those together is deadly but coming from someone who just reviewed plug which sits at a default 740 charge time which i believe is a more manageable charge time fusion rifles are not necessarily good for running and gunning they're good for you to set up bait direct enemies into your lane with you and then proceed to get the one shot blast off adaptives struggle with consistency i'm just letting you know i've sat down and damage tests with certain adaptives and if your enemy is not standing still your bolts man just go into houdini land now for pve corner is still a great option and you can even do things like corner and slide ways together and just constantly run and gun with it i know this weapon also comes with surrounded which is interesting but i think frenzy will probably be more manageable for you to prop so maybe frenzy lead from gold slime ways etc and enhanced battery mod too there are other fusion rifles that are better for pve in my opinion like cartesian can roll with vorpal that's kind of what i'm looking for in the future and if at any point bungie allows fusion rifles to become the anti-barrier weapon option for a future season then of course disruption break would be disgusting and i want to say disruption break used to be present here on Dreambreaker, but it is not therefore other fusion rifles like zealots reward trinary even timelines vertex which when was the last time you even heard about that weapon they got disruption break though again though other options here for dream breaker i'm already pessimistic when it comes to 660 charge time fusions but maybe this will surprise us uh -ho! next up we have every waking moment this is a submachine gun present in an energy slot 600 rounds per minute has a default zoom of 13 that's important and by important i mean that's that's piss poor that's bad 13 is bad shayora which is present in the same slot has 17 now granted let's look at these random rolls because it may sway us range finder you're gonna need it maybe range finder multi kill clip but really i hate that man because look right there you got heating up present on this weapon and heating up multi kill clip would actually be a disgusting option for this smg now granted i've talked about heating up in the past really only being a good perk with weapon perks like rampage things that allow you to just lay on the trigger but this is a submachine gun you can't really lay on the trigger you got 26 rounds on the magazine you're gonna run out of shots. You're gonna have to reload. Multi-kill clip is actually the better option here as you don't have to time your reloads in between each kill. You can just run and gun. Every time you reload, you self-proc the weapon perk back on itself. And as long as you're getting kills afterward, you'll have multiple stacks of heating up and multi-kill clip. It's an option. But again, like I said a second ago, Shayura is second to none when it comes to SMGs. It's literally that good, guys. It's the best SMG in the game. So it's hard for me to sit here and promote any SMG, especially another submachine gun within its own archetype that has worse default stats when it's sitting at 13 zoom and shayora sits at 17 mathematically shayora would just always come out on top inside of pvp now for pve you've got dragonfly you got thrash adrenaline junkie multi-kill clip i wish we had a reload perk but you don't maybe ambitious assassin look this is kind of weird this has been like the theme for all these weapons it's like one column is like yo we're a pvp weapon and then the next column is like ah, i think we're a pve weapon now there's like some conflict 
click tier. I don't even know. I, I don't I don't like what I see. I just don't. I don't. And maybe ambitious assassin dragonfly. Like ambitious assassin is really your only option here. What are you rocking range finder and PVE? You think Zoom's gonna save you against Savathun? No. I'm not gonna say anything about the SMG because it won't be positive. Let's just move on. Love and death the grenade launcher. All right, let's let's get impressed because I want to be impressed. This does solar damage. It's in the rapid fire frame archetype. Chain reaction. Thank God. Chain reaction auto loading hoser. Let's go. War mind cells. Yes. You also got one for all, which I know is kind of a weird one. And if you're going to do one for all on this thing, you may want to consider one for all clown cartridge because you want to have a few shots in between after you've already probably sent at least one to two shots to proc one for all. Now, of course, you can rock it with surplus, which is fine as well. You do get 10 seconds for that damage buff. Now, it also comes with danger zone where the blast radius of the weapon increases when surrounded by combatants. I have still got to test danger zone out. Now, the main thing I want to test out with danger zone is its blinding capabilities, right? When combined with blinding nades. However, they're not present here in our magazine column, but that's like been the thing I've been wondering about danger zone this entire time because blinding nades instantly kills your blast radius, right? It just drops it down damn near negative. Does danger zone pick up that weapon's blast radius outside of what we see visibly to the point where blinding grenades actually will have a wider radius in its blinding capabilities? Trust me, fellas, we're going to be reviewing an ignition code here soon. I know we're like two months late, but that's what we're going to be testing. Outside of that, you do have demolitionist swashbuckler and you see it there. Swashbuckler grave robber because nothing like rushing the enemy with your GL. I love self damage, but honestly, the most meta perk on this weapon, one of which I have never seen on a GL is firmly planted. I can't tell you how many times I shoot a grenade launcher and I'm like, man, if only I had firmly planted. That increase in accuracy would have been so nice on this projectile weapon. Kind of a let down, guys. It would have been nice had we had full court, maybe even something crazy like full court chain reaction. I know that sounds a little crazy. That's starting to sound like too much fun, right? Now, moving on, we have a fine memorial. Now, I know machine guns are not exactly metal right now. However, they are getting a buff next season. And this is an adaptive frame machine gun that has options for you. Matter of fact, surprisingly, I don't mind it all that much. I actually think this looks pretty good. You got subsistence, which is substantially better than what it was before, as it no longer hurts your reserves. You also have one for all, which is very easy to proc on a machine gun. That's really the best options I see here. But you kind of got some 21% delirium vibes outside of its archetype, of course. But that subsistence one for all role is what I would go for. And I would actually pass up Frenzy on that too. For PvP, I guess Elemental Capacitor heating up. Look, it's hard to beat Commemoration, right? Like that is one of the best machine guns for PvP, surprisingly. But I would actually look at either heating up Elemental Capacitor or heating up Snapshot. Snapshot would actually help the handling of this weapon. Moving on, we have Night Terror. Yes! For those of us that like swords, I like it. It doesn't even look like a real sword, right? It was like it started off trying to be a pickaxe and then it was like, yeah, I guess we're just going to be a sword. It is present in the adaptive frame archetype. And I got to say this season, it has more competition than ever before, especially with the inclusion of class specific swords. However, Night Terror is not locked to a specific class. And you do have crazy things like one for all, which is kind of interesting. Vorpal, which is actually pretty nice. Just get a flat buff right out the get, right? Surround it. I've tried surrounding on swords. You can do it. But you definitely got to situate yourself to keep certain enemies alive, especially if you're trying to deal damage to thicker targets, right? But you got the normal Relentless Blade, Tireless Blade, Jagged Edge, all those things. Nothing that impressive as far as counterattack, energy transfer, or even flash counter. Flash counter, yes, you can do it. I even have a flash counter Vorpal roll, which is pretty nice for those moments where the enemy goes for a stomp, which is also an option here with Night Terror. Again, the rolls on Night Terror actually look pretty solid. It's just there's a lot of really good swords this season. Now, moving on to the dreaming city weapons the return of the most common drop ever in forsaken tiger spike a 450 round per minute auto rifle which yes just got a buff this entire archetype got a buff this season not substantial but still a buff now the meta perk options i'm looking fellas i see range finder i see surplus i'm happy that's it let's go home that's all we want no but for real that that's actually a great option range finder on an auto rifle sure why not the only auto rifles i can think of within that 
that archetype that can come with rangefinder is seven serif carbine which i know a lot of you tell me all the time you're like yo this is the most meta auto rifle in the game and i'm like no it is not i know you're trying i know you want seven serif to be a meta weapon it's nice in pve but it's not the meta weapon inside of pvp i'm just saying now the question is does tiger spite have the consistency the shadow price does no shadow price isn't meta but it feels good it's got like that d1 vibe right i think with surplus rangefinder you can get that outside of that tiger spite is actually positioned better than arc logic though you've got overflow subsistence with swashbuckler maybe you want to rock a demolitionist role everything that arc logic used to have bungie like took all those good things and put it on this weapon overall i actually really did like tiger spite just back in the day 450s were not necessarily meta they're not even meta now but 120 round per minute hand cannons did just get a nerf i'm starting to see a range there north of 36 37 meters that's open territory can tiger spite reach that area with range finder we'll see moving on we have twilight oath this is a rapid fire frame sniper rifle it actually is a really good feeling rapid fire frame what was the other one that i really liked i loved the moon one apostate reminds me of prostate this one doesn't have the ability to two tap or at least two body shot kill like some of our other rapid fires though because it doesn't come with high impact reserves now granted you're sniping so you're probably trying to go for headshots so snapshot no distractions is actually pretty nice here no distractions actually procs quicker now and until you use no distractions you don't realize how much flinch it actually mitigates but that in combination with snapshot actually looks really good on twilight oath outside of that pve you do have vorpal you do have feeding frenzy you could just roll surplus and vorpal together again i'm looking at twilight oath more as a pvp weapon although vorpal is pretty nice here now our final dreaming city weapon that is return is abide the return another sword kind of running in the same scenario that our previous moon sword was also running into but this one has a little different utility it is in that adaptive frame but notice here disruption break is present that is interesting that makes me think that maybe just maybe we may have anti-barrier rounds for swords next season risky for sure but an option and of course combining it with either tireless blade relentless strikes all options outside of that guys the final weapon i wanted us to look at at is actually the solstice shotgun compass rose it's a beautiful shotgun it's in the precision frame archetype now we just tested shotguns and we had a decent like reto tail it wasn't like god row or anything but in terms of its kill range precision frames well they weren't necessarily doing good previously last season and now like a mid-tier precision frame might get the one hit kill at five and a half meters maybe six meters if you got the right roll that's not that impressive looking at its rolls though for pvp you could try to make this work but i would go for the two tap i would go for assault mag full choke snapshot maybe quick draw you can immediately have it out kind of weird there right like where are we going with this it does come with vorpal which i know back in the day cqc also came with vorpal which we would use and a lot of people would actually go for the quick draw vorpal row with max range all i'm trying to tell you guys is that out of all the archetypes precisions to me felt arguably the worst perhaps rose here will be differently i don't know as for pve though i think vorpal field prep dual loader although it kills that reload speed so i would probably go just surplus vorpal you also got trench barrel you can do trench barrel surplus as well you also got lead from gold one for all is also present on this one which like i said before is a weird one for a shotgun if you can make it work great but nothing here to me is really screaming meta so guys that is our overview for all the new weapons or or re issued weapons plus one that has been added to this july update let me know in the comments below what you think we're gonna be reviewing a lot of these individually starting with loud lullaby as i'm very interested to see how that 120 handles in this current sandbox with the 120 nerf as well as how it compares against many other deadly killers within that same archetype fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right